how um, we finished attachment and tree synthesis. Now we're doing viral assembly. So the viral proteins will be assembled into the capsid. They'll associate with the viral nucleic acid. So that combination is all, often referred to as nucleoprotein. And then another important thing is if the virus has an envelope, the virus has to insert its viral proteins, um, most importantly for the adhesins, into the host cell membrane that they will steal. The, the stolen host cell membrane will become their envelope, right? So the viruses have to insert their the viral adhesins into the cell membrane that they'll steal that will become the envelope. <clears throat> and in the case of coronavirus, you guys, um, again, this is a little bit more complicated than um, than some of the viruses, but um, the some of the virus proteins are made by host ribosomes attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, which is right here. So the um, some of those viral proteins are going to end up the, for example, the coronavirus S protein, the adhesin, and the HE, which might be the um, the adhesin for the co-receptor, they're inserted into the endoplasmic reticulum membrane, and then the um, the the nucleocapsid, the viral nucleic acid, <coughs> excuse me, um, viral nucleic acid with the associated proteins buds through the endoplasmic reticulum, so it steals endoplasmic reticulum. So here is the um, envelope coronavirus, and then I think it's processed through the Golgi, and then it's delivered in this membrane-bound vesicle to the cytoplasmic membrane. It fuses, and it's released. Pretty wild. So what we just went over, I was jumping ahead of myself. So we talked about assembly on the last slide, and now we're going to talk about how the vi how the different viruses escape from the host cell. And the three techniques are lysis, where they'll you know kill the host cell, break it open, and then the viruses escape. That's a good technique for, say, maybe naked viruses. Um, but in addition, naked and enveloped viruses can escape by exocytosis. So you'll want to remember um, that's how the coronavirus escapes after stealing the endoplasmic reticulum as its envelope. The coronaviruses are released through exocytosis. And then this last one, you guys, is really cool. It's budding. Um, again, this is a great way for envelope viruses to acquire their envelope. Um, budding is how influenza viruses escape from our cells and how HIV escapes from our cells. Okay, so let's, here's all our steps, you guys, so we're on step five, release. So again, folks, we could have just lysis of the host cell. So those would be like lytic viruses, kind of like the T4 um, bacteriophage that cause lysis and death of the host bacterium. So lytic viruses would, would, um, kill our cells basically. And then there's exocytosis, right? So where the um, the assembled virus is enclosed in a membrane-bound um, vesicle and then that vesicle fuses with a cytoplasmic membrane and releases the virus into the external environment. And then budding, okay, so this is a cartoon you guys of budding. So this could be influenza virus or maybe HIV. So let's pretend it's influenza virus. So here we have, well, actually, this is a bad example, you guys, for influenza virus because the um, each of the um, eight RNA segments have, have their own protein associated with it. So, okay, what the heck, you guys, let's just pretend. Let's pretend this is either influenza virus or HIV. This is more like HIV. So um, this is the, the capsid. And note here, you guys, that the virus has inserted viral adhesins, viral proteins, into the cell membrane. Now for influenza virus, it has to insert the hemagglutinin and the adhesin, and then the second protein we'll talk about called neuraminidase into the host cell membrane and then steal that as envelope. HIV, if this were HIV, HIV has to stick its adhesin called GP120 and the fusion protein called GP41 into the cell membrane um, that will become their envelope. And here you guys, this would be so cool if we could watch this. We see the capsid then um, migrates under the cell membrane and it looks almost like it's pushing on the cell membrane. So the cell membrane is evaginating here and eventually the mature virus then is going to escape, be released 
and you'll see that it's stolen that um, cytoplasmic membrane here and again all of the um, viral adhesions would have to be in the envelope and then it's going to go and bind to a neighboring cell and start the process all over again. Now, okay, so we talked about how the envelope viruses have to insert their viral proteins in the host cell membrane. Um, so the viral envelope, we would say, is modified host cell membranes, right? It's been modified, changed by the virus inserting those proteins in there. And again, folks, we want to remember that it, anything that damages the, um, the viral envelope, that's a typo, sorry, so, and, and remember folks, the viral envelope, it's basically cell membrane, fluid mosaic model, um, the consistency of olive oil, very delicate. So, so many things can damage it, like soap, alcohol, bleach, UV, sunlight, drying. Good old soap, you guys, will destroy the envelope of the coronavirus and of influenza virus, right? Anything that damages the envelope, the adhesins can no longer function. So the virus is no longer infectious. You've inactivated the virus by damaging the envelope. One thing, folks, I should have added here is when the viruses insert their proteins into our cell membranes, that marks that cell as being foreign, quote unquote, in cells of our immune system in a cool, well, not, not good for us, but cool process called cell-mediated immunity cells of our immune system will recognize our cells that have been parasitized by these viruses and they will kill these cells, right? So part of the damage that happens in influenza infections, in coronavirus infections, in um, any viral infection, it's not just the virus directly damaging our cells, it's our immune system trying to kill our cells that are infected. And you might say, why did our immune system evolve that, you know, as a Way to protect us. Remember you guys, if our immune system can destroy these cells early enough, if our immune system can destroy our infected cells early enough in the infection, the viruses can't replicate. So actually it's a really cool way to do it. But do remember, our immune system is like a double-edged sword. We can't live without it, but our immune system can also cause a lot of damage during microbial infections, especially during viral infections. So you guys, I think that's it. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll finish that audio and then we'll do another audio, folks, on how um, viruses generate um, diversity and they have a lot of incredible ways of, um, of generating diversity. And the reason genetic diversity amongst viral strains is of interest to us is um, viral mutants can um, uh, develop antiviral drug resistance. Um, the mutant strains of viruses makes it really hard for our immune system to keep up with keep up with them, right? Protecting us against all the mutant strains. It's really hard to develop vaccines against viruses that mutate, change rapidly. Um, so, right, so that that'll be another audio. Okay, you guys. is purring so not sure if you're getting that background noise you guys she she loves it when when we're doing audios because has, has a captive audience <laughs> 